Oh, oh, right on. That's awesome. Well, Sean and I are brother and sister. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> invited me to see the band I like. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so, you, um, Zach, you grew up in Hawaii. Were you born in Hawaii or did you grow up in Hawaii? Yeah, I was born on Hilo. Okay. Yeah. Big and, island. And did you grow up there? Yeah. You grew up there? Yeah. Japan, Hawaii, and San Diego. Oh, you lived in San Diego as well. Yeah. What part yeah. of San Diego, if you know? I have me? no idea. Oh, really? Yeah. You were, you were I was super young. Super young. Yeah. Like a military uh, situation? Or no, just... my dad is even worse—a surfer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. awesome. Okay, that's right. No, <laughs> ex, yeah. ex military. Recall, recall that. Yeah. Ex military surfer. Oh, wow. wow. So dad, famous uh, surf uh, shaper. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, uh, famed. Um, is it... Uh, JC. JC Hawaii. JC, yeah, yeah JC Hawaii. Remembering the logo. Uh, yeah. San Diego. So yeah, yeah. The logo. Yeah. That's cool. So you grew up in... It, where did you, like, find more residency then? In Hawaii? Was that... In Hawaii, yeah. Oh, okay. North Shore. North Shore. Mm-hmm. And how did you get into music originally? Um, my grandpa was a musician. So oh, he really? would teach me how to play piano. Um, uh, my sister too, you know, I would steal her CDs and stuff like that. Oh, really? Her boyfriends would like give me <laughs> CDs and stuff. <laughs> what CDs do you remember? Like, uh, I just I remember the first one was like probably Blink One Eighty Two. Oh, you really? Know, Enema of the State or Dude oh, Ranch wow, or something like rad. that. Yeah. And then you moved to San Diego at some point. Yeah. So. <laughs> very, yeah very from San appropriate Diego. Yeah. San Diego yeah. We, yeah. we listened to, Blink, like, right when we got to San Diego, just put on Blink-182. That's funny. That's really cool. Uh, you grew up in Hawaii and learned music from your grandfather, picked up piano, mm-hmm. picked up some records from your sister, and from there, did you start learning guitar? What was the next step for you musically then? Yeah, it was guitar, um, but then, like, quickly after the guitar was the computer. Oh, really? <laughs> Fruity Loops. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's like, well, that's where I started like really getting into music. Was okay. Like, it was Fruity Loops, and at that time it was Cakewalk 3, son- ah. or Sonar 3. Yeah, that was the DAW that we use. Okay. And Do you still use that to write? No, no, no. Pro Tools now? Or? I use Ableton now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nerd. Max and Elvis, you guys are brothers, right? Yeah. yeah. And you grew up in LA? Yeah. Yeah, we... Uh, born and raised there, and our dad's a musician, so... Yeah, your dad's in TSOL. Yeah, yeah. And so early on, you got... I mean, you guys must have been exposed yeah. to music through your whole entire lives, I would assume. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and he's a... I mean, he's composes now, like, does music for, you like, know, a TV and commercials. Oh, and sure. Movies, so... When we were young, he was always playing music and always had, like, you know, huge binders full of cds and like always had like new music and um so and, and always like instruments around uh-huh. um so yeah we started playing super young he got actually got max a drum set on his first birthday so wow kind of predetermined, that would have predetermined first birthday <laughs> <laughs> that would have it was like uh, you're gonna be a drummer okay yeah uh, you got no other choice <laughs> wow so yeah. tell me about that yeah. like, <laughs> we need a drummer. You need a drummer in the family. Can't fucking hire. Can't fucking find a drummer. So I'm gonna make, make my kid one. I'm gonna make one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of piano. Piano lessons too. A lot of. Yeah. Did you get kind of like <laughs> pop punk two first initially? Uh, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Only, was like like yeah. Well, when we were you know around ten, ten years old, I remember specifically like you know hearing blink 182 and then it was kind of that was a really big for us and then or even before that though like green day like Dookie well, yeah, was a, day. yeah that was yeah. set in the car like to school a lot when we were like really young i mm. remember yeah. wow so was your dad just in the g- green day or I, yeah i, I was about to ask my the parents spring, yeah, yeah offspring, offspring that, too the, yeah the, smash, the, smash was a big yeah, one that was, that was a huge record for me too yeah, because, yeah. uh get out or uh uh, what's the Keep Them Separated Keep Them Separated. Yeah, that yeah. song was in every skate oh, and yeah. surf video. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was on that, commercials and everything. That yeah. was yeah. everywhere. Yeah. that. Uh, I remember getting that record and listening to it in my room with, with headphones on because Smash had... It, that was like the record that had so many cuss words on it because yeah. of that one song. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm such a like rebel in fourth yeah, grade. Yeah, I went to Tower swearing. Records. They wouldn't sell me it, but then I went <laughs> on a trip uh, to Japan and they sold it to me. Oh, <laughs> really? Like, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Come on. We don't have to well, whatever. Yeah. Going down to Mexico to yeah, get yeah. beer when you go to the Yeah, when you're under Japan. 21. <laughs> That's so funny. All the way to Japan for this offspring. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
So you had a you got a drums kit at at one, and do you yeah. remember really getting into when you really started getting into music uh, then? I kind of really started uh, when I like started taking lessons uh, when I was like nine. My dad had like a mutual friend of this drummer, this guy Dean Butterworth, who's uh, he like plays with, like Good Charlotte now, and he's oh, like, okay. he like is just like a touring guy, sure and. Uh, he kind of gave me like the foundation of like learning how to build on like actually playing playing correct, drums, like, correct stick placement and stuff, sure. and just like all that stuff. So yeah, that's kind of when like I was like nine, I think, when that started. So I was like, that was kind of the beginning of okay, so, yeah, starting. Who, well, who's older between you and Elvis? He's a year older. You're a year older. Yeah, thirteen months. So wow, Irish twins. Irish twins. I love uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when did? So your brother got a, a drum kit at one. Did you? When do you? Did you get your first instrument? Um, well, yeah, we both kind of took piano lessons early on, and then um, I think I got a guitar when I was um, around nine, around nine or ten or something. <laughs> That's our sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so you got a piano? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no piano. No, I didn't get. I didn't get a. Oh, piano. you were taking lessons. But uh, we were taking lessons, and then and then I got like a you know little mini guitar at some point when I was probably like I don't know eight years old. And then okay. I think when I was like around ten, my our dad gave me um, gave me his Strat, like his nineties. Wow. Know, Strat. So yeah, I, I kind of got really into Seafoam guitar. Green, like Tom DeLonge. Yes. Yeah, oh, green. was so it, it was really? Like the ideal That's guitar awesome for me because it was the Tom DeLonge guitar. But uh, it just happened to be the same color. Like he didn't know he got it like in nineteen ninety or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but it's a really nice guitar. I still have it. But that I, I got around ten years old is when I got kind of like really really into guitar and started you know learning songs and then and then from there on I kind of just got obsessed with it so okay and yeah. did you so then you guys must have jammed together a lot as kids yeah or no? yeah we'd play talent yeah. shows and all that shit you would oh play, would you play piano first before the the guitar though I yeah. did play yeah. piano first yeah and then I think at a certain point though when you, you when you're taking piano lessons as a kid it's like you're just you get to a point where you're like, this is not fun anymore. <laughs> yeah, and you can't yeah. bring a piano yeah. to school. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, so you kind of, like, at a certain point, I just lost interest in it. And But we took piano lessons for a while. Okay. And yeah, then... Uh, a couple years. And then when yeah. I was 11, uh, I we started a band together. Like, I was 11, you were 12. That The yeah. Diffs, that was like... That was your first band together? That was together? Kind of like the first real band, yeah. And yeah. was your dad kind of... Oh, like was he involved Quasi at all? Yeah, not Quasi like not Quasi like managing manager. you, but like, kind of. but yeah. like, but like, listen, going in Producer. and going to your practices and like trying to give you some pointers or not really. Uh, that. I wouldn't say practice. <laughs> he, he produced the the record. Smagro uh, recording yeah. session. <laughs> yeah. All right, that sounded great. Next time, let's try harder. <laughs> let's just let's just use this brand new thing called Beat Detective over the whole record and make it sound. <laughs> Choppy and, like, and weird. Do all like a very early plug-in, you know, amp yeah. plug-in guitars. Yeah. <laughs> like, like all the guitars yeah. were digital. It was hilarious, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it actually doesn't sound terrible. I mean, yeah. um, but uh, you still have but copies yeah, he, of that. Uh, yeah, no, that our records on Spotify. That we oh. did a record, um, the diffs. Yeah, it would. That was when we basically like around you know twelve, eleven, and twelve. We kind of like then got into you know the older punk stuff and got our dad's record collection and then kind of. Uh, he started, you know, he became like kind of reconnected with the guys in TSOL because he hadn't played with them in a long time. Uh huh. And so we started, we we started opening for the old punk bands like you know, no way, like the Dickies awesome. and the, oh wow, and Agent Orange wow. and um like the Germs when they reformed, sure, like all the all these bands, yeah. So um, that was kind of the sound. We we just sounded like the Germs basically. Yeah, like Dead Kennedys That's kind awesome. of. That's so cool. So you were just, you guys were both kind of just thrown into that whole scene. So yeah, that was, it was like a family, you know, yeah. you know going to, going to the, the punk, punk clubs shows. and stuff yeah. as young kids. Wow. That did you have to like help roadie for him or anything? Like, was he yeah. like carry some uh, symbols? Yeah, or? Yeah. <laughs> I carry his, some of his keyboard stands a couple times. I remember. <laughs> when did Max and Elvis, when did you guys get connected with Zach? Um, Around it was like two thousand eight, yeah, two thousand nine ish. I was, uh, yeah, because I was just out of high school, and then, um, or I was the first year in college, and then I uh, interned at this studio, King Size, 
Um, it's a recording studio in LA. Okay. And, uh, and Zach was working there. And so we just met like kind of hanging out in like oh, okay. area. And so you, you, when did you move from Hawaii to, or were you, you moved out yeah. to LA? Yeah. I was probably like two years before that. You, or you were out of high school at that point or I was like, tw- I think when I met you, I was 20. Okay. Yeah. And so Brandon was 21 and he was buying us alcohol. Uh, that's, all, that's how we <laughs> That's how you drink. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he was 21 and yeah, uh, yeah. when we started. Okay. 19, Max was 18. Yeah. Like he was eight. just out of high school. Um, Did you tell like four music? Like with that in mind? Well, no. <laughs> I just, I kind of like, I woke up in LA. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had like a crazy car accident. I was pretty fucking psycho dude in oh, Hawaii. Wow. So... And then I like ended up in LA and I was like, all right, well, moved in with the skinhead in Orange County. Oh um, my god, that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one blur of a dream. Just and like, it was told to him I was Portuguese <laughs> and it was it was cool. I guess. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! So he wasn't like a real skinhead, huh? Yeah, it was gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> so you <It> sucked. Yeah. <laughs> European man. Uh, um, so you were working at the the recording studio that. You were interning there? Yeah, I was Okay, there, and you yeah. at, were already working as yeah, I was, like, producing I was there, stuff? Like, I basically knocked on the door at this place and was like, I, I want to do this, you know what I mean? And then just interned for like a year and then oh. eventually became an assistant and then became an engineer and yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So at that point, you had already went through the process. That yeah, was, I was, was still kind of going through the process. I mean, it doesn't really stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I was living there at that time. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> without them really knowing. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was working. I think at that time, I forget what record we were working. I think Tokyo Police Club. I yeah, think it was a Tokyo Police so you, Club. You, oh, because you were already producing albums before I was, uh, starting. Working with this guy, Rob Schnaff. Okay. Um, he was like a producer guy. Rush. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you, you're, produ- you're working there. You guys all meet up. And then how do you, do you three start jamming and me, then get Brandon? Or how did that work? Me and Elvis, like the, almost the, I think it was like the first day we met. Um, we just jammed with our friend Sam Eaton. He was drumming. Mm-hmm. We jammed for like, we were really hungover. So then we got like I think Sparks. <laughs> oh, I remember the I think those were <laughs> Sparks. Yeah. Are they still around? Yeah. I haven't seen those. Yeah. The original well. Four Loco. Yeah, that was yeah. the original yeah, yeah. Four Loco. There was oh because uh, um, th- the session was sponsored by Sparks. There was a Sparks uh, refrigerator <laughs> too. You remember? Um, and and the then Sparks matches. Empty. Yeah, oh, I remember. Matches. We had like a bunch of them. I don't remember the Sparks matches. Yeah. <laughs> so we met and we just it was empty. So we just got. Redrunk and uh, <laughs> and just started playing. Started jamming and we jammed for like three hours straight or something. I remember the first time. Whoa. It was just uh, Zach was playing guitar and I was playing some playing Farfisa. Like a Farfisa organ and then our friend was playing drums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a band at a certain point where I played organ and Max played drums. That's and awesome. we had oh, so the piano cool. lessons did come in handy. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I kind of came back to playing piano because in in college I ended up like studying piano classical piano because the program i was in had to you had to get in on an instrument and i was like i'd kind of rather do you know get my piano chops back rather than like learn you know guitar because i never really that never really spoke to me like learning you know like classical guitar like or any sort of guitar was always kind of like a little more you know free from that yeah 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 totally yeah, because the, the the piano is essentially you can do anything yeah yeah totally it's 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 really good for writing yeah when you know you know um, like theory, like yeah, it. music yeah. theory and all that stuff. So where where were you going to school at? Um, Cal State uh, Long Beach. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then from there, that's yeah. friends from there. And then you yeah. went, and that's when you started working at the studio when you got into the it was, program. It was like the first. It it was like my first year at at Cal State Long Beach, and it was because it was like a summer thing. Like sure. I went like I did a few months there, but it was because of our friend Sam Eaton. That's how I even got the internship at the studio was oh. because because there was this long list, list of, of people of like people to get in. Yeah. He, he was a friend of Max's ex girlfriend, and he was like, and he, <laughs> he was just like, skipped you to the front. Yeah. He skipped us to the front. Yeah, yeah it so. was really weird. I was just like hanging out with her one day, and I was like, yeah, I was just trying to find the studio, and like we were hanging out with her friend Sam, and he's like, oh, well, I work at this studio. I could get you an internship yeah. there, and I was like, all right. And I called Elvis, and then that ended up being like the whole 
That Whoa. was pretty crazy, yeah. Uh, yeah. So in that three hour jam session, was was it like Fiddler? Like did was that energy nope. there? <laughs> no, it was it was. It, uh. But it was it, it wasn't really until I, I remember it like we went to go get pizza. Mm. Yeah. We 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 were split a uh um Little Caesars. Hot yeah, hot, 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 yeah. <laughs> Caesars. <laughs> and then he played uh, um, in the car, he played uh, um, uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Queens of the Stone Age. You yes. think I'm worthless, but I feel like a millionaire? Yeah. yeah. That yes. song. And I've, oh, I've loved that song and that record in Me general too. forever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, we should start a band. Like, you know? That's so awesome. It I, just did, but it wasn't even like, like, let's start a band and name it Fiddler. It was yeah. like, we were just kind of like studio rats you mm-hmm. know what i mean so yeah. we're just like learning how to use the gear while writing jams mm-hmm. you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah. how it came together rather than like like hey let's like, all start a band sure it's, you guys were was, just hanging out playing at the just studio a little fun project that we had going on and brandon was my roommate and they were brothers so it just kind of was like oh, it all like just it this all just kind of came you know? together. Yeah. Wow, wow. I was wow. wondering if you guys might like Queens of the Stone Age. I, I love the new record, by the way. And, oh, thank you. Uh, I, uh, one of the ones I really like, because I love Queens of the Stone Age, too, is Flake. And I feel like Flake yeah. has like a little bit of the, like, a little Queensy uh, vibe yeah. on totally. that, uh, you know, on, the, uh, on those backup vocals. And the drum yeah. intro, yeah, sure. the oh, drums yeah. on yeah. it sound, mm-hmm. it reminds me of that, and like the black keys a bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. The, we're Gary going, Glitter. We're going for Gary Glitter. The, the pedo. Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> pedo beat. Like, what is just that? That's, that's the exact one. I was trying to... Ex- that 80s song, right? Yeah. That's the yeah, one you're yeah, talking about. Yeah. Rock and roll uh, part uh, two. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. The, 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 oh, that's... He, in the car, he yeah, was trying was to tell me. Like, it's an 80s song. I was saying, like, every song talking? that has a beat that's similar to that song, I love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the shuffle beat. Yeah. Like, Black Keys have one. Black Skinhead. Kanye has has a similar one. So, yeah. Billy Eilish. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The new, the new single, right? Yeah. That bad, bad girl. Bad guy, bad yeah. guy, oh no, no. Uh, the other one. You know what I'm talking where about. Do you, uh, oh, where do we go? When you go to sleep? Is that what? It yeah. Is? Oh, that's yeah. a record. I know. What do you want from me? Dun, oh, dun, dun, yeah, yeah. Dun. oh, that has it, but it's like a filter um, on it. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's very a friend. <laughs> Cycle. <laughs> exactly. Sick, oh. man. We but we needed it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you guys start jamming. You get, how did, and then how did you and Br- you guys met through? You, Brandon was your roommate. Brandon Time. was my roommate at that time. Was he? I don't think so. Not yet. Not yet. I think he was just a homie. He was just a buddy of yeah. guys. And he yeah. Around and we, you know, he played bass and he had been in. He was playing in bass and, in Rooney. Yeah, or, he, yeah, something oh, like nice. that. He was in Rooney for a bit. I don't know if he was at that time, but he was definitely. Maybe he was. No, but he I think was. He got Rooney when you guys started living together. Okay. Right. Well, he he was like a you know like a, we just knew he was a good bass player and he had been in a bunch of bands uh-huh. already. So um, it just kind of it yeah, was a good fit. Made, it just it was just natural. It was like yeah, we started going to the studio, jamming, making yeah. stuff, and then there's kind of uh, well, there's kind of a through line of this band <laughs> kitten also that's not very good that we were all we in. Go. You were at one point. Okay, I want to hear that's about this. What it was, and so, really. like, that's kind of when we started like playing yeah. with each other. Yeah. When we started, oh, like, when we started, well, when we all first met, we were me and Max were in this band. The one I was playing organ in that was called Ray Brower, and we were we were in that band. And then and then our buddy who we went to high school with found this. We were just talking about this this uh, in the uh, in, in the dressing room, but our buddy um, Max Ratsky, he found he found this ad on Craigslist, and it was like. It was like you know, you know, uh, up and coming singer like looking for a band like major label interest like it seemed <laughs> such a like such a scam yeah, on, yeah. on Craigslist. <laughs> I remember he sent us the ad and we were like, this has got to be bullshit. And he <laughs> and he goes out there and it's his house in Pasadena and it's this girl you know at her parents' house and he's like, you know, jams with her in the garage and sure enough, it was like a real. She actually did have you know label interest and all this stuff. Wow. But then he brings Max in on it and I, at first I was kind of like. I don't want to fucking. You do just this. straight up didn't want it. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> and then, well, then the then the guy, the manager guy, like asked me about it, and I was like, I don't want to do this because, like, we lived on the west side also, and like driving to Pasadena for practices and stuff. I was like, yeah. this great, is like Greg Keen counsel. Yeah, I had some Greg Keen counsel on this, and then he was like, make them fucking pay you. And I was like, All right, cool. And so I was like eighteen, like just whatever. Like I don't like. I just didn't want to do it enough to the point where I was like. 
I'm o- it only is worth it if I'm getting paid. So then right. I started getting paid to do it. So and then yeah. everyone else was like, whoa, <laughs> fuck. I mean, if you get paid, then <laughs> everyone else trying to start getting paid. <laughs> I, I we paid in. our rent for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. paid our food, yeah. 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 I came in playing keyboards, and I was like, I can play keyboards, and then just... Oh, you that's know, funny. It. And it was and, yeah. it, and it was just so I like, came in playing bass. <laughs> and then Zach came in playing bass. And then the <laughs> and then manager went out and then the scumbag like, manager like tried to basically tried to poach Brandon, our bass yeah. player. Uh, like, he couldn't do a Zach. show. And then he was like, I know a bass player, Brandon. And then Brandon came <laughs> and was like, This in. is a weird situation. It's like at this dude's ha- back house with this little like 13-year-old girl. And then the guy tried to go like to Brandon, like, hey. Like, so you want to do it instead of Zach? He's like, Zach fucking told me to come down. Like, he's my friend. Well, I'm not going to, like, quit. Like, like make uh, him a Hollywood story on you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was very, You don't need very, these guys. But that was the very first LA time that we all, like, situation. actually played together. Yeah. Like, and that was probably a huge reason why Fiddler started in general was to do everything the exact opposite of the way that they were doing. <laughs> On, I mean, like, dead honestly. Yeah. Everything yeah. was like that. We were like... Well, it was, yeah, the show, it was just, it was just really shit. The whole situation was very shitty and it was like this, you know, asshole manager and like, yeah. they were just like, it was, it was very LA as you were saying, like, it's just this, like, it was just it was a like gross, delusionally LA. Yeah. Though. Like it's gross like LA, uh, story. But, um, but anyway, I, I just, we all didn't like it, but I was, I very much can't really hide how, how I'm feeling. So, like, <laughs> so on stage, very so obvious. on stage, I was just like visibly very, like, very upset looking over and he was literally like this on the far feet. <laughs> found a chair on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got kicked out. <laughs> Uh, but it sounds like it was kind of like you you saw of it you saw it as like a scam. you're like this has got to be a scam but then you guys almost kind of were scamming them cuz you're like oh we can make money from yeah, you yeah yeah, yeah. Like, we'll play no, totally. and play and take got, your like, money a good thing is like oh, i got to get our buddies <laughs> well, it involved was, yeah. Yeah. it was a Dude, weird we're getting thing. paid to play with this girl well, it was weird cuz it it started <laughs> off like not I mean, it was kind of like this weird, like, like it was like we were playing at the smell or whatever for like 10 people and stuff. And then uh-huh. it was like, oh, Atlantic wants to sign her and like fly. Let's fly to New York and meet with it. Like, and then it just suddenly like really turned into like a real thing. And then I was like, yeah, fucking pay me some money. Then. <laughs> I'm not fucking doing this shit for free. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but and yeah, then- but it's just, it, I think it was a big like push to be like this, this music not even like necessarily the music, but just this whole this world of sucks. music yeah. is so <laughs> shitty that it's like let's do something that's fun yeah. and well, it, like yeah. actually not horrible. Yeah, I feel like before before being in Kitten for me, it was like yeah, music was more mo- was more of a thing for fun and like right. you know it was an expression of like you know because in our old band the Diffs like that was the band when we were like eleven and twelve. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know we wrote our own songs and mm-hmm. it was not there was no like. You know, there was no agenda really. It was sort of like it was we're just, just playing music, playing to have fun. So then, being in a band like that was kind of like I want to. I wanted to get back to like okay, I want to you Go. know make make my own music or and do what you love to music do. And do. Yeah, yeah. And, and make it a fun thing and and kind of so so yeah, that was a big impetus for for <laughs> it happening. Um, was there a is is kind of fiddler your your kind of lane? Is that like why you guys settled with that sound? Because obviously you produced uh, Tokyo. Police Club, Brandon was in um, Rooney. Um, so obviously you guys like a, a wide variety of music. Was Is this kind of, you know, is punk rock kind of your favorite your favorite genre? Is that why the Fiddler kind of turned into that? I think it was what we connected on at mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, honestly, like, we were actually all in hip-hop groups mm-hmm. <laughs> separately <laughs> at that time, too. Really? So well, it was like... Because you can hear it a little bit, especially... Yeah. 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 So it's very, like... And then on top of that, like we were playing shows and we realized like, oh, if you turn it up and play like, you know, 50 BPMs faster, it's going to be way more fun and kids are going to move around. Like it was just kind of what inspired us at that moment. Um, And then the way that the records produce slash sounds is like just because we did it at our me and Brandon's place and the minimum minimal amount of gear we had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of mainly lo-fi out by of default. But yeah. yeah, it's like it wasn't lo-fi to be lo-fi. Right. It was like is the it's reason what we got is yeah. what we got. Right. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounded great. Yeah. I when that, I first heard uh, "Cheap Beer," like that was I think the first song I heard by you guys, and that was years ago. Even before, I think I didn't have Spotify yet or anything, and. Um, 
So I think I got it off like you remember Stereo Gum used to like let you download songs off oh, the yeah, website. Right, I think it was yeah. like a free download, That's and cool. I, I was like, these guys are sick. And it Back was like time. at a time when I felt like there wasn't a lot of like good new punk. Like I was listening to a lot of old punk. Yeah, and I was like, this sounds. It sounds lo-fi, old-ish, but it sounds like there's something new about it. And yeah. the energy was just, like, good, so. Well, that was yeah. also happening in L.A. where it was just super indie. Right. Yeah. Like, that's what all the shows were just, like, indie shows, you know? Mm-hmm. So we were, like, let's do the opposite of that. You right. know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And we, I mean, we started by, you know, playing house parties and things that were, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you want to get the, mm-hmm. you want to get the crowd going and you you want it to be fun so yeah it was definitely always about that that sort of energy i think Did you find as you were playing more shows that 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 (laughs) was putting you into certain types of house parties like i feel like it lends itself obviously well to like the skate punk yeah i mean it was honestly just friends and and just zach's place you know it's like we where we recorded the record we'd have but the live room was like we'd have shows in the live room, so oh, we'd just wow. have we'd have people, and it would get really hot and <laughs> crazy. Yeah, and right. that, and uh, remember that band Trapped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was <laughs> she used to have that album. <laughs> <laughs> it was their studio. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it was their house it studio. Yeah. yeah, that's so funny. That, yeah, <laughs> headstrong, dude. Yeah, man, that was like <laughs> that's funny. I remember her playing that. From yeah, that it was just it was more like he was saying it was just like homies and. It was the scene around that time, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it wasn't really like, let's start playing house parties or let's yeah. just like... We just kind of make, you make stuff happen because it's like, especially when you're a new band, it's, you know, I would email, you know, promoters around town, sure. but, but nobody pays attention, you know, nobody, you don't get many responses. So it's like, you know, you can't really book shows in the beginning. So we're like, all right, we'll just, you know, throw parties and play. And right, so right. then and you get, then you have a, a big audience there if there's free beer, you know, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. You, then they're going to come. You <laughs> always say free beer and then suddenly the beer runs out, yeah, right, right when everybody beer. comes out. <laughs> right so when everybody shows that's up. that's the, the pro tip for this podcast. Yeah, for, that's uh, funny. <laughs> when did, when did, um, you guys really start to pick up and get label interest in, in all that? How did that all start? Uh, CMJ 2011. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was the, the CMJ in New York. Uh-huh. Um, it's like basically their version of South by Southwest. Okay. Um, we did like like ten shows there yeah. or something. Yeah. How did you get hooked up with that? We played. Uh, well, we're, I mean, it just kind of started. But it started sort of like you know gaining some momentum because we had played like South by Southwest a few times and yeah. then like. And then word kind of started getting around, and we just like you know played a bunch of shows, and then and then um, started talking about doing a record. And then our manager, who who no longer works with us, he had a relationship with this label, Mom and Pop, out mm. in New York. Yeah, and that's how that's how we got hooked up with them. Great. And uh, and then and then CMJ was kind of a part of that, like. We signed with them. And Wait, you like, signed with Mom and Pop? We signed with Mom yeah. and Pop, yeah. and we did a but bunch of shows. But when we were at CMJ, we like met with we met with a couple of different labels and like a couple of different like booking agents. It was like that was yeah. kind of like the first time where we were like really exposed to, to like, that, like making some decisions and like right. getting introduced to people. Wearing but yeah, like the managers was like probably the first step, and then that and you got CMJ the man like, you got the management through just shows in Los Angeles. That was just a, yeah, we played. We actually played at a place called Time Warp. It was a it's a um, vintage music shop in uh, Mar Vista. Okay. Which is kind of near like Venice mm-hmm. uh, area in, in LA. And uh, yeah, it was just this show with this band called The Shrine and they're, they're our buddies and they're like this three piece like, you know, power trio kind of kind of almost metally hard rock I think stuff. I've heard their stuff, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we were just doing a show together with them and, and uh, our manager Brian Frank came to see them play um, and then happened, like to catch guys our, better. Yeah, happened to catch our set and he was like, <laughs> oh shit. And then he just kind of kept calling. He like gave me his num, gave me his card uh, and he just kept calling us and we were like, dude, we don't need a manager. Like we're, <laughs> we're like we, we've been dinner for a year. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait, what did you do? One whole year. You made him made take us. You. Yeah. Oh like my for God. A one I whole year. At the time he was working at Interscope Records and so we'd like go down to his office and we'd be like, we'd hear the whole spiel and be like, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think we need, I don't nah. think we need a, a, um, a manager. And then eventually he was just super persistent and, and we could tell he, you know, cared about it. So we, mm-hmm. we ended up working together, but yeah, it was a total like, fluke you know so as a band kind of getting the manager you kept saying we don't need a manager we're good we're, we're doing fine and then yeah. and then when you finally were like okay let's do this did you see it was that a was that a turning point what did he actually do well, some things that really like changed things for I you? think it was just a combination of like doing more and more mm-hmm. and feeling like 
okay, like maybe we can, you know, maybe this is something we should take a little more seriously because like things, you know, some because people some are, momentum yeah, was building. Yeah, people are actually sort of like grasping it, it onto of, it. I think it just kind of kind of like came together in that sure. way. It was also like the internet. <laughs> like oh, it was like okay. literally like YouTube. at that time it was like YouTube was popping off uh, and it was we would just we, we moved into the fit, fit house and it was like we had a control room and a live room and we had studio gear and we would just make songs and make videos on YouTube and post them like that night. Wow. And then the next day we do the same thing. We just like we're constantly like making music and post, posting it's like during that time like CMJ post CMJ and then like doing the tour. You were you were still in school, yeah. um, so it was like we had we were staying in LA at that time, but we were constantly making yeah videos. what they call content. Yeah, now, yeah, you sure, know? Sure, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So you you, know? did you have the management before you did your first tour, or I don't, or you just went yeah, for it and I then. Think so. To, yeah, because the record was by the time we did the oh, yeah, ice yeah, tour, yeah, the record yeah, yeah. was already done, uh, coming out. Yeah, so we were, and that's also too. We were oh, we okay. made the record before we did the tour, and the whole thing was like, you, so you had something to tour on. Yeah, yeah exactly. Elvis was when we were recording the first record. Elvis was was doing his finals for. Ah, I remember uh, that for, uh, uh, when you were a senior. Mm. Yeah. The content was that just uh, live, just you guys filming yourselves uh, like rehearsing or like or jamming to the song? No, it's or, like getting super stoned jacking, and like yeah, downloading, <laughs> down like ripping off other people's YouTube stuff and piecing <laughs> it together. Okay. And you know what I'm saying? And a lot like, of that stuff was like to like the demos of what would have what, what became. became the first record. Yeah. too. Wow. But a lot of other stuff too. But like a lot of those first. Before Thanks. Fiddler, the self-titled record came out, we had like 50 songs already on YouTube. Like, oh, before you even put yeah, out the first album. Yeah, like it was like, the way that we looked at it was, I kept losing hard drives. <laughs> <laughs> so if you post it on YouTube, YouTube ain't going anywhere. Right, you know what exactly. I'm saying? So like, that's always there, you know? That's funny. <laughs> we were just talking about hard drives. Um, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Don't be so precious about everything. Yeah. I, I think that's like a big thing. It's like um, it's just whatever gets you stoked, like inspiration wise, like that's what you just got to keep chasing that and making music, putting it out. Make it, don't think that the last thing you put out is going to be the big thing. It's just like you keep making stuff. You know what I mean? If you want to make stuff, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Work hard. Yeah, I think I think that was a perception of us early on was that we didn't work hard you know but that's always been a part of a part of this band is always like doing a lot of hard work with you know which yeah. is yeah just writing and recording and and like um putting in that time because right. yeah it sounds like you guys have been it. putting in a lot you know yeah. a lot a yeah. lot a lot of leg work we got before. labeled as like slacker punks and stoner <laughs> punk you know what i mean yeah, so it was but, like these guys just hang out on the couch and smoke weed and it's like, no, we're actually like yeah, in the, we yeah, <laughs> but we're doing it in the studio and somebody's hitting record, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>